Hello, everybody. Welcome to our panel on the, the Rwanda value add um, event. Um, and we're talking about global talent pool. I have here two um, remarkable individuals with me. I had a privilege of uh, meeting them uh, yesterday before we started. Um, Happiness Oase and Anthony Farr. Um, and so um, I'd like to start with first, um, you know, um, just giving each and every one of the opportunity to present yourself, okay? And, uh, you know, share with the audience a bit about yourself and about uh, um, your organizations, right? Happiness is the Managing Director of Bridge to Rwanda. And uh, Anthony Farr is the CEO of Allen & Gill Great Philanthropy. Um, Anthony, with your permission, is it okay that I start with happiness? 100%. <laughs> okay. Um, wonderful. So, um, happiness. Uh, mm -hmm. As I mentioned to you yesterday, um, I love your name, <laughs> and I mm -hmm. think that it's uh, so unique, you know, to have a name that internationally everybody n understands what it is and knows what it is, and it has such a beautiful meaning. Uh, like I mentioned to you, my name is, you know, it has a meaning in Hebrew, which means a gift, which is positive and nice, but yeah. um, most people here don't just think, you know, that I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah. you know, I think it's just wonderful. I'm, I'm assuming every meeting you start, you know, starts automatically with a good vibe, no? <laughs> because they're just calling out your name and saying happiness. Yes, um, it does. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. So, uh, I personally met over five alumni of the, your program, of Bridge to Rwanda, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I must say that all of them were outstanding. Um, can you please tell us a bit more about Bridge to Rwanda and the career services? Yeah. Okay. Great, I will. Um, so my name is Happiness, like you said, thanks for having me uh, on this event today. Uh, so I am actually as well a Bridge to Rwanda alumni um, in the first class. So Bridge to Rwanda is an organization um, that supports young and talented Rwandans um, to get access to scholarships abroad, uh, but also um, supports them to come back to Africa and work there. So our mission is to build a, law, um, a lifelong fellowship of high capacity leaders in Africa to accelerate growth of their countries and improve lives. So um, that's really our goal. We started uh, about 2010, um, 11 actually, that's, that's, that was when the first class started and I was part of that, um, part of that class. So we are trained on uh, competing for scholarships that are out there, and uh, but also um, even extra training on leadership, um, the importance of coming back and building our own nation and our own continent. And uh, from there, we're sent to go really and um, fetch knowledge, like our president always said, to go and fetch and come back and try to tailor that into into the context of the country that we live in. So we have about 10 cohorts right now, um, and uh, our students are almost every school in the US, especially all the Ivy Leagues, and a few in Europe and other parts of the world. Um, but with that, uh, really our goal is not to just get students into schools. We, I run and I'm very responsible for um, supporting British Rwanda's mission to come to fruition. So. Uh, we run a huge program that supports students uh, to return back to Africa. Uh, we support students to get connected to internships, um, also get jobs upon graduation. All our alumni that have returned, all of them have jobs. And, uh, and uh, they are, like you said, they're spectacular and very, very talented students uh, that come back and easily uh, find it easy to launch a job, uh, to find jobs in, um, in Rwanda and elsewhere in Africa. So with our success, we've been able to actually work with two other partners um, that are other two scholarship organizations. And right now we're working with over a thousand diaspora Rwandans uh, that are interested in returning. And we support them uh, through connecting them to opportunities here, connecting them to mentors, connecting them to internships or research that they would like to carry out or volunteer opportunities. And uh, uh, with all that, uh, we have a huge network of employers that are actually we also try to support their needs through helping them find the talent. Uh, so uh, really the goal here is to make sure every investor that is coming in is able to find talent that really understands the investor, but also understands the context of the country that this investor is coming to invest in. 
Uh, so yeah, with Bridge to Rwanda, uh, we definitely have several other initiatives in agriculture um, that actually are led by alumni, um, alumni all over the um, place in government, private sector, in public service, and all over. So um, I'm going to cut it short and maybe take in more questions. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move to open questions to both of you in a minute. Okay. Thank you. Um, Anthony, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, Great pleasure. Can you please share with us some more about Alan and Gil Gray philanthropy? Sure. So Alan and Gil Gray, uh, I suppose, obviously emerges from the individuals behind the name. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mr. Gray, Mr. Alan Gray, uh, is, is one of the continents, or was one of the continents, uh, most successful asset managers. Uh, he he started uh, with a little startup um, in 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 the bottom of, of tip of Africa uh, about forty five years ago, just with an assistant after being globally educated. Uh, and from those humble beginnings, uh, Alan Gray, the company has emerged as the largest private asset manager in Africa, uh, managing about fifty billion dollars of of assets under management. Uh, wow. But but. Uh, what was even uh, more interesting about the Gray family, uh, Alan and his wife Jill, is that you know, despite that commercial success, they uh, really believed uh, in the importance of promoting uh, the common good and uh, were very philanthropically minded and, and always believed that uh, enterprise should be a lever, a force, a platform for, for good. Uh, and so over the years, they've been involved in, in a number of uh, philanthropic efforts. Uh, the, the first institutional one uh, of, of scale was in South Africa about 15 years ago. Uh, it was called the Alan Gray Orbis Foundation. Uh, and essentially, the the idea uh, behind the philanthropy has really been about to uh, about identifying exceptional entrepreneurial talent at an early age, uh, and then walking a long lifelong journey uh, with those individuals, creating a, a community of of like minded exceptional talent over the years, and and then allowing uh, that to to really foster and develop uh, exceptional outcomes. There's a an an interesting insight uh, that, 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 that we have come to, to be convinced about is that, that all human talent uh, explodes if it's identified early and it's intentionally developed. Uh, and you know, I suppose we, we do that very successfully in areas like sport. We know who the, the high potential sports people are coming through the system from an early age. We know that with music. We even know that with intelligence. Uh, but, but surprisingly, society hasn't been as organized about entrepreneurial talent. You know, it's not like we know every year who, who are the top 100, top 1,000 entrepreneurs coming out of high school or coming out of university, and we have a pathway for all of them. And so, so the, the Alan Gray Obis Foundation started that that model about 15 years ago and so there's now a pipeline of of about a thousand um, of of these current and, and future entrepreneurs that, that were identified literally in high school and have now gone on to a number of different exploits some of them are are still gaining their skills and their, their experience but but from from a high school starting point they've created businesses with a value of of in excess of 200 million dollars and and so really with the Alan and Joel Gray philanthropy, uh, the, the, the Gray family have made more resources available to, to promote uh, uh, this vision. And so we've been able to expand and, and come uh, to, to the exciting context of East Africa uh, and specifically to, to create a, a hub um, in, in Rwanda to, to follow that, that same approach or really about identifying exceptional entrepreneurial potential and then creating a pathway for them to, to convert that potential into, into actual impact. And so uh, we're in the middle of a, uh, the, the campaign uh, that Happiness is well aware of called Jasiri. Uh, and Jasiri is that, uh, I suppose we would call it a talent, um, a talent investor, where we are, are, are seeking to find 50 initially uh, exceptional Rwandan, and, and also we're looking at Kenyan as well, uh, entrepreneurs that we can take right from the, the early stages, from, from the idea formation through the team formation, right through market entry and into scale. So, so we're excited uh, about being able to do that um, through the Allen and Joel Gray philanthropy. Wow. Wow, that's fantastic. So, um, I mean, first, let me just say that I, I, um, I on a personal level, um, am always inspired by, you know, individuals who build something, 
you know, from scratch, like you're mentioning, um, and, and build such an empire, you know, over $50 billion on the asset management, asset on management. I think it's, it's remarkable. But what I find even more inspiring and amazing is, is what they choose to do with their success and with their resources, right? And everything that you're mentioning um, is really, um, it's, it's incredible because at Empower Africa, I can say, you know, one of the things that's most important for us is, is we, we really believe that business is the way to, uh, uh, to go about it, right? Business is the best way to create sustainable and scalable solutions. And um, whether you're looking at, you know, a village, a country, an economy, anybody, anywhere on the globe, right? Um, uh, the famous story of, of, of teaching someone how to fish, quote unquote, right? or um, enabling and empowering um, different people around the world to, uh, uh, to really, you know, build their own business um, and to be a more successful entrepreneur or a more successful athlete, um, I, I just think it's 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 the it's the best win 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 situation for everyone, you know. Um, and I so 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 really that's uh, that's that's amazing. Um, I have some questions that I'm going to ask more openly, so you know, to both of you. So feel free, of course, to you know hop in and they're they're addressed to both of you. Uh, you know, even if I. Uh, have a specific question for someone uh, a specific. Before we continue, though, happiness, could you just share just a, um, a little bit more about um, the founder of Bridge? Yes. How it came so, about? Yes, 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 definitely. So um, our, our founder is Dale Dobson, and uh, with a background of being an investment uh, banker, <laughs> um, coming from a business world, was invited to come to Rwanda early 2000, around 2004, when he visited um, to help uh, a bishop that um, wanted to start a school, wanted, was starting a school for orphans uh, in the northern uh, uh, province of Rwanda. So he came with an invitation supporting that school, uh, but wondering how um, he could help the country. So everyone who is not in Rwanda or has not been in Rwanda, I'm telling you, when you come, you stick around. <laughs> so I, I'm also extending the same invitation that the bishop did. Please come and visit. Uh, you can see Anthony is now in Rwanda. Uh, Caleb has been in Rwanda. I'm very sure he's also going to come and stay. So uh, he came, and um, the bishop actually challenged him to um, support Rwanda through business development, like starting businesses, and uh, because that that was his background. So um, he started inviting his network, different investors, to come and look into Rwanda. Uh, some businesses were started. Uh, uh, Fast Microfinance Bank, he supported that to raise uh, funds to start that, or Greg Opportunity Bank. Uh, but from that process, there was a gap, um, which was the talent gap. So bringing in investors, uh, but really wanted people were not skilled enough to support, to run these businesses when investors were starting. And, uh, but throughout his work, our CEO was also noticed by the government of the president and invited to be part of um, the advisory council of the president. So, and, um, and during that time as well, the government had a scholarship program that were helping help Rwandans to go study sciences and engineering. Um, but this was also very costly to the government. So, hence our president challenged our CEO to start a program uh, that is uh, self-sustained, uh, does not cost a penny to the government, but still allows the brightest and smartest Rwandans to compete on a global level to get into uh, the most prestigious universities. And Bridge to Rwanda started in 2010, 11 from there, just to create this pipeline of talent, um, but also learn from what was the failure of other scholarship of organizations. So how did the rest of the students not come back when they got their scholarships? So, and that's what we did differently by creating a careers branch of Bridge to Rwanda that really facilitates the launch, connects the students, the talent that has been that has gone abroad to connect back to the country, um, and uh, and that's what we're running today. So um, that's a little bit about of the history of a CEO. He's based in the US, but often comes to Rwanda and brings in as well more investments, inviting several visitors to come and visit um, Rwanda and try to see what kind of investments that they can make. And we would provide the talent, definitely. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Um, so this is, again, for, for, for both of you. Um, can you share a little bit more, um, um, Anthony, about the program itself? 
Um, you know, how does it work? You mentioned it uh, a bit, but you know, who's the target audience, so to speak, right? That that, that you that you're mentioning, and maybe also if you could share some uh, some insights on the selection process. And again, I'd love to hear that also from you, Happiness, on your end. Please, Anthony. Sure. Um, so, uh, I suppose we we want to um, find some of those uh, Bridge to Rwanda uh, uh, alumni and and. Uh, Launch them um, to to great effect um, entrepreneurially. So so our our target market would would uh, in terms of the ideal candidate would be someone that's university educated. They're probably in the age group 25 to to 35. Um, they they've got a, a, a either a very strong domain expertise or or they have a, a significant track record in, in kind of ex entrepreneurial exploits uh, before that. Um, it's it's a as we said we're going to be doing doing um, six monthly cohorts of, of these individuals. So it'll be uh, 50 every six months, 100 a year. Uh, and, and really, uh, it's going to be a, a, co a co competitive process because, I mean, we, we feel that this is a very um, interesting and exciting opportunity for, for the right individual uh, in, the, in the last few weeks for, for the campaign that's ending on the, the 19th of, of February in terms of this this first cohort, the inaugural cohort of, of Jasiri, uh, we've already had well in excess of a thousand applications. So uh, yeah. that, that's the sort of volume um, that, that is coming through at the moment. Um, in terms of our selection process, you know, we are you know, we really need to to make sure that we are, are selecting the right individual. So, so we have a very um, kind of clearly defined entrepreneurial competence framework. We, we've been selecting for potential entrepreneurs for, for a number of years. So, so we've made the mistakes, we've done the hard yards, we're we, uh, looking for, for, in terms of look what we're looking for. Um, it starts with a standard application and then, then there are a number of uh, other processes, um, psychometrics, uh, interviews, um, and it finishes with a, a selection conference uh, by which stage we will then uh, have a clear idea of, of those individuals uh, that we want to work with um, and and the program this talent investor program it's a it's a one-year program it's it's fully funded um, the first three months are what we call the intensive where we really get people to kind of understand the philosophy the intention behind this this high impact entrepreneurship that can create businesses that can really go to scale and and create uh, employment as well um, and the right sort of values this responsible value of, of really understanding um, that that we want uh, we, we want to kind of drive the economy forward uh, at, a, at a broader scale as opposed to just individual uh, enrichment um, we are very excited about the concept of market creating innovations uh, we're working closely with the Christensen Institute it's a it's an idea that's captivated the imagination of of Rwanda to, to be a flagship nation around market creating innovations uh, and so, so that's the direction that we'll be, be, be shaping uh, these entrepreneurs. After three months of that intensive, they'll have formed teams, they'll have validated uh, their, their idea. Uh, then they move into another nine months of, of, of product market fit iterations to really kind of understand, uh, you know, whether this, this is an opportunity that, that can go the distance. Uh, mm -hmm. During that stage, they're given a stipend. So we're really wanting to create a pathway for individuals to land on, to really be able to focus 100% on creating uh, an exceptional business. And then we will continue that process beyond that into an accelerator and, and really create this community and, and work with uh, the, the existing ecosystem in Rwanda to, to really uh, achieve the aspirations that we all hold um, for, for the entrepreneurial and in fact, the East African um, entrepreneurial ecosystem. Fantastic. Wow. Uh, yeah, um, I think on my end, we're we're, we're almost looking for what Anthony as well is looking for. Um, so we, we've actually, so we're not the first uh, scholarship organization that has existed, but what uh, we've used our criteria is just looking at what other scholarship organizations have done and how can we do it differently. So uh, we're looking for a servant leader. So, and there's a series of interviews um, and or entrepreneurial mindset, someone with an entrepreneurial mindset, because at the end of the day, this person has to make a bold move. Um, after graduating to come back to Rwanda and um, start from scratch, uh, coming with a degree from Harvard or from any other prestigious university and come back and work um, in Africa. So academically strong, um, definitely. So to be able to get uh, this scholarship, you have to be academically strong. We're also looking into extracurricular, um, some volunteering opportunities. Have they been able to start a small business? 
helping a shop or a startup box, selling some stuff to help their families out while they're also studying. So those are some of the things that um, we're always looking for, but it goes through a series and also very rigorous uh, interview process, thousands of applications, but we're only taking about 30 students um, to be part of the program, fully funded uh, for them, about 16 months uh, of training. Someone might be wondering, how do we train someone for 16 months to get into school? Uh, the Rwanda is just at 10 years old into speaking English. So English is still a challenge. So they get to do um, his English training. Um, they get a lot of writing, uh, right. leadership, uh, leadership training. Right. We actually, our leadership training is a very uh, focused on Africa, just learning from um, leaders or heroes of Africa because we want them to be inspired to come back and uh, want to be part. <laughs> uh, I want to they continue what the heroes have already started or done. Um, they also get to do like professional development. It's mandatory for every student within our program to do community service, um, just to go down deep in the vulnerable and identify the vulnerable and try to support them. Um, again, to steer that entrepreneurial mindset, what can I do? What can I start? Right. What kind of business doesn't exist in this area? <clears throat> and um, also support them to do like internships before they fly out um, to their respective universities um, to go with that, starting to build that network of employers. So they get actually to do internship before they even start university, uh, three to four months, uh, that gives them a view of what they're going to be signing up for once they graduate or where do they want to work? What do they want to study? What does the country want? And we run also different programs where we invite different speakers, startups, students that have gone abroad and come back just to talk to them. So in a nutshell, um, that's how uh, the program is, is run currently. Yeah. Wow. I mean, um, I can I can uh, I can assess and share just you know from my uh, personal experience, um, you know, human capital and you know hiring people and finding the right people to the selected programs uh, and to build a company and so on is really one of the you know one of the most challenging things, um, and and just in general again to find great passionate talented people is not an easy thing. I think um, mm -hmm. people who haven't been through this process or been actually doing it, I think, uh, you know, can underestimate how difficult and challenging it is. Um, I personally um, am fascinated by truth is by people in general, but the concept of HR and, and of these, these different, uh, you know, uh, building teams and, and the different processes and what to look for and how to find these people. Um, I've been a part of, a, of a, a number of selection processes for the past uh, 15 years or so. Uh, both from uh, uh, my military service uh, in the IDF as an officer to the specific unit that I served in. And so we had a number of different series of, you know, tests and interviews and, and, and other things like that. There's three other NGOs uh, that have been involved throughout the years as well. And, uh, um, you know, different programs uh, and, of course, three different companies of, uh, you know, in, in the Israeli uh, high-tech ecosystem. But from your experience, um, Anthony, and happiness, what's the biggest challenge that you've faced in terms of you know this this uh this quest to find the right people right i know happiness i remember hearing some of the numbers of yeah. the applicants that you guys have blew my mind and um anthony you mentioned now um you know the the the, the various uh really the wide spectrum of different type of people and the amount of people that you know want to get in applicants what do you find what do you find the most challenging Yeah, I think um, I, I think the, the the challenge is that uh, you know, we we try to think um, that there's a silver bullet um, in mm -hmm. terms of the sort of selection. Um, you know, I remember in the early years, I was convinced that there would be this one instrument, or there would be this one test one step, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that we we could put people through, and uh, and and that would sort of solve all our problems. And uh, unfortunately, I've been schooled to realize that there is no uh, silver bullet. You know, human potential, human talent is 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 unlimited, and it's 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 unlimited in its variety and its nature. And so, you know, I think that's that's one of the challenges. So, 
yeah, in terms of how how we try and address that is to really be as as multifaceted as possible. You 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 want to to look at people in different contexts. You want to understand their experience. You want to see them in action experientially. You want to understand some of the uh, the psychometrics. So you have those angles, and and you try and kind of piece it all together. Uh, and, and kind of start to get an understanding of, of what, what might work. But I think at the end of the day, um, particularly, I suppose, when we're selecting for entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is a contact sport. So, you know, you can't, it's not a theoretical yeah, enterprise. Right. <laughs> um, and, and so, so yeah, I think you just need time to, to really either it's sort of seeing what people have already done or it's, it's, you know, building into your process an opportunity to kind of really see people in action and almost have gates along the way. So that actually your, your, your first selection is really just a, 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 a kind of a, a, a an initial entry uh, as opposed to a final decision um, and uh, to really kind of see people along the way. Um, but I, I suppose to, to, lie, to finish off on this, the one thought though is that, um, you know, there, there will always be these golden threads of, of individuals over over the years in different ways and in different contexts where they've they've shown some of those uh, edges and those glimpses of, of entrepreneurial ability. And so it's, it's you know, I think the challenge is to really dig deep enough to kind of uncover in, in maybe different contexts that don't look particularly like what you're looking for, but they show uh, the behavior that you're looking for. And, and the more sophisticated that, that we can get in doing that, the, the, the better we become at, at identifying the people we need to. Great, thank you. Happiness, you wanna? Yes, I think I will echo what Anthony said. Uh, I, uh, human capital, especially in Africa, young, uh, is unlimited, <laughs> is infinite. So we haven't fought challenge in finding students that really join our program um, at all. Um, that has been, we get thousands of applications. We wish we could actually be able to support <laughs> as many as we can, uh, but uh, we're also limited to how many students that we can help get access to um, apply to those um, scholarships or opportunities. Um, I would say the only challenge um, that currently facing may be on the other side of the careers uh, where we are not much making um, talent out of school with employers or talent right. with experience with employers, where there is a, a little bit of um, a challenge, a Rwanda being a startup nation uh, in itself, uh, that uh, it becomes, um, as the country is developing and more investment that is ca coming in, just the prediction of the labor market becomes harder uh, because um, the skills that the labor market is looking for keep on changing depending on the investment and advising students on what courses to take that the labor market needs um, right. in a timely manner versus waiting for four years. So there's definitely gaps in some of um, our database that we always use through um, the information we get from employers and the, the data that we already have over students and other partners that we've already onboarded uh, that what they're studying or what they're doing and just figuring out what gaps are there and be able to advise those that are going to, into school um, to start pursuing those kind of um, training that um, would, would, that will go, are going to be needed in the future or are currently needed uh, but filled by uh, different people from outside the country and now that could also be filled in the future by Rwandans. Um, that have those kind of skills. So I would say that's that's a challenge uh, currently. Right, right, wonderful. And could you just share, if you don't mind, you mentioned a couple of thousands of people apply. Mm -hmm. How do we end up uh, making the finish line? Uh, so our current cohort is uh, about twenty-five out of fourteen hundred applicants. Wow. Uh, so yes, uh, about twenty-five, one percent maybe yeah. or less <laughs> that make it. Incredible, amazing. So I have a more question here. More than Ivy League. <laughs> more so, it is. It is. And, and if, I, if I remember correctly, it's also a matter of all these 1,400, correct me if I'm wrong, happiness, are all, you know, out of a certain tier of, 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 of grades and whatnot, correct? In other words, it's not yes. just, right? Yes, yes. It's, uh, all the students that apply are actually academically strong. It's just that the several interviews that we get to do to analyze the person and get to understand them before right. we onboard them. Um, this is a residential program as well. We're also looking for people who are going to be of value to the rest of the group. Um, again, we're, our goal is to build this fellowship. Um, yeah. so, so that's when we start cutting down the numbers. It's actually right. a long process to cut all the 1,400 to just 25 students. 
I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So I actually have a question here from someone uh, in the forum, Simon Davis. Hi, Simon. We actually met, uh, I think it was in London uh, about a year ago. He's from, uh, he's a general manager at OX um, and uh, they're a market creating um, electric transport startup um, originating in the UK and they're just building their Rwandan team. Um, mm -hmm. We want to find local people who can build the business and deliver local value. And so he's asking if any of your programs um, could be relevant for him and, and, and to speak to him. So first, before you, um, I mean, sorry, what, what, why don't you start? And then I'll, uh, because Simon, you should definitely speak, you know, reach out to these two <laughs> remarkable individuals and, and speak to them. But happiness, mm -hmm. would you? Yes, definitely. So if I'm understanding correctly, he's looking for local talent, but I would set up the business and run it, right? Is correct. That correct? That's, what, that's what I understand from the question. And also because I've met him in a, in a past event, um, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, the company is uh, um, basically has an amazing product of um, uh, a vehicle that mm -hmm. can be a, better tran a, tr a form of transportation um, um, in uh, many developing countries and countries in general. It's, it's, it's kind of like um, Uber, but like trucks in the mm -hmm. sense that you can just have more people and also include uh, people from rural areas so that these 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 uh, vehicles are more, um, you know, they're four by four and and, and so on. Um, but yeah, so what I hear from his question here, um, yes, he's looking to hire a local team. Yes, please, I'll be happy to share my contact information and we can talk about how I can support him to hire a local team. Uh, and welcome to Rwanda, by the way. Wonderful, <laughs> Wonderful. Anthony, you wanna uh, mention something about that or we'll move on? Uh, no, I, I think we we uh, we wanting to try and build other OXs. So, so I think happiness would be a great, great. starting point. <laughs> <laughs> great, wonderful. Okay, um, so I think that there's also the. I mean, again, um, I, I'm also interested to hear from your personal experience, uh, both in uh, Rwanda specifically, uh, maybe compared also to South Africa, Anthony, if you if if you'd like. Um, I can share, by the way, just from our perspective, like I mentioned that we've been looking for a product manager, uh, to hire a product manager from Power Africa. And um, uh, Rwanda is one of the main countries that we would love to uh, hire from in that sense. Um, I mean, are there any tips? How would you guys suggest uh, for us to, you know, find, um, you know, this extremely talented individual? Yes, <laughs> uh, thank you. So tips, one of it, so it's just working with us. That's one one tip uh, just to help you understand the market. Like I said, there is also the skills gap uh, that we are noticing within our country. So we don't have all the skills and advise you accordingly. Um, where else can we find this talent? The other challenge that we're currently facing is more of um, the pay gap. So if especially um, coming in as an investor or a startup looking for someone, a product manager, with several years of experience, uh, that can also be very, very challenging because we don't have that many. Um, and if we wanted to bring one working somewhere in the US or Rwanda, um, is the investor going to be willing to pay the same as the US? So those are some of the things that you need to consider. Or the other thing, look into a very entrepreneurial minded, um, having the training, uh, but also willing to invest in them. Uh, that they can go into this role and be able to pour into other people that are going to come and work um, after them into that role itself. So one of the things that we expect investors to be part of is also to um, support us in developing this talent <laughs> uh, that is still very young uh, to nurture it and grow it into these managerial roles um, that we can build this pipeline of talent together. So I'll, if there is no budget to pay someone who's going to fly back home completely and quit their job that right. is paying them maybe six figures <laughs> to come and work in Rwanda. So those are some of the things that we could chat around and come up with, with the solution. But those are things that you need to consider and think about when it comes to gaps, um, especially like having a product manager advertise for so long. That should be something that tells you there's not that many. Um, how, how else can we do it? And those are some of the ways that I'm just missing. Yeah. Right. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Anthony, do you want to add something before I continue to just, the next question? 
just uh, I suppose there, there's a, a real determination um, uh, to to address uh, these talent opportunities and and also I, I suppose a real organization and an understanding of of where talent might lie so I mean it, it, for why there's a whole um, um, a kind of skills office in the Rwanda Development Board that is addressing um, these particular challenges. They they have a database of of all the talent, both locally and globally, of graduates. So so I think you know, connecting to those sorts of opportunities. Also, I think we've got to play. Um, I mean, it's not an immediate answer to to that particular issue, but we've got to play a longer term game here. And there there are you know, ex a growing number of extraordinary educational institutions that are that are making their home mm -hmm. uh, in Rwanda, Carnegie Mellon, African Leadership. University and and over time, you know that that's going to be uh, those are going to be hotbeds of of potential talent. So it really might be a good idea to start building connections and understandings with those institutions. They will have their own networks to really start finding the talent that people are looking for. Right, wonderful. We have another question here from um, Ilana Watson asking, "How is the internet connectivity coverage in Rwanda?" And I've heard this from uh, from from someone else who was asking from the, you know, um, uh, understanding of especially during COVID, but not only, right? How it's all remote, um, and uh, and uh, you know, hiring a, a top talent in Rwanda. Um, and again, both of your I'd love to hear both of your answers here and your thoughts. Anthony, since you're new, do you want to start in the country yeah. and share? Well, you're hearing me now, so that's a good start. <laughs> I was going to say the same. I think uh, that if you're able to hear us and see us, uh, that's how it's working right now. Um, I think um, that definitely this year it has even grown up better uh, than before uh, because of the restrictions, lockdowns, uh, that private sector uh, the government as well have put in more effort to try and tackle any kind of um, issue of connectivity. So that's why you can actually are able to see us and can hear us today. So, yeah. Wonderful. Great. Um, so is there any, um, you know, before we um, wrap it up, um, are there any case studies, any anything specific that maybe you'd like to share? Yeah, I suppose. Um, I mean, uh, uh, let me start. Um, and and again, uh, I suppose my case studies are, are not. You know, we we entering into Rwanda, so you know, the, the case study is is an example of. You know, we we there are some exceptional. Um, entrepreneurs in Rwanda, as we've already heard from some earlier um, this afternoon. But I think the the main point I, I want to make in terms of a case study is just to is to realise that you know if you if you have been able to find the right people and that you walk uh, alongside them, um, you know those people will eventually figure it out, and they they will you know it might not be the first iteration, it might not be the second, um, but but they will get there you know with with that sense of of resilience, and we've seen that. Um, uh, in, in our in our work with with entrepreneurs in other parts of the con continent, um, you know, they, 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 you know, we have uh, one particular uh, entrepreneur, D Daniel, that's very much um, into sort of bioscience and was working with enzymes and and kind of was trying with a few products and and actually you know wasn't making much traction. And then in the in the situation of uh, of, of the pandemic that we've had over the last years, you know, his, his business Cape Bio has been able to to become um, you know the first that, that we know of African company that 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 is able to produce the the reagents that that can do the PCR tests at at, at half the price of, of what you would be paying uh, to bring it at, at else. Elsewhere. And and it's those those sort of case studies. We we have another uh, entrepreneur that's been working with energy for years and years. And initially, he was moving in one direction uh, uh, in terms of you know, storage um, of, of nano storage as a solution to the energy crisis in, in Africa. Uh, that for various reasons didn't work out, and so pivoted into actually now creating a a, a market for energy across the continent. Eventually, like an Uber for for energy to be able to trade it across the continent, and ultimately perseverance and, and talent wins out. It's, we've just got to be patient enough um, to, to, to stay with those individuals, give them the support across the whole ecosystem uh, to realize that we, we can't be in it for, for short-term success. We, we have to be committed for the long term. Right. Um, yes, uh, 
nice. That's actually great working with them, with the talent. It's actually very, very key. I would um, use our, our success has actually um, been um, attributed because we work with the talent, with the students. Um, like I said, when we send them abroad, we actually do not say goodbye. There's an entire support system um, to support them, get connected to school, get a host family, have somewhere where to go when you're uh, doing holidays. Uh, be able to fly back home uh, for internships. So that support itself um, has the one has been the one that has led to the success of se several students coming back home, but also being able to flourish within their jobs. So they have a team that supports them uh, getting to these jobs, but they have a team to come back to to advise them how to grow into these jobs that they're holding, <laughs> how to grow. And uh, recently we have uh, we have had a few people that have started their own um, businesses. We've had two students, alumni um, that have worked in the government, now have been uh, now our advisors to the minister of recent, actually two months old within their roles. Um, we've seen our students come from executive assistant in a bank to a corporate manager within a year or two. Um, but being patient and nurturing and giving them that support and counsel that they need. And that's one thing that I also want to encourage whoever is investing in Rwanda. We have young talent. Um, we don't have so many people, 10 years of experience of what you're looking for. Uh, but if you're willing to come and work with that talent, uh, they will persevere. I know they'll definitely succeed in whatever you are trusting them with. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Happiness. Uh, I see we also have a question here from, uh, from Dale Dawson. Uh, to Anthony. Uh, first of all, Dale, if you're with us, um, pleasure to meet you and thank you for joining. Um, I mean, I, I think if you, I don't know when you joined, but I've mentioned uh, my <laughs> admiration uh, to Bridge to Rwanda. So really just, um, I think you do incredible work. Um, he's, Dale is asking, Anthony, do you expect any differences at Jaziri between Rwanda and Kenya? Thanks, Dale. Um, yeah, I think, um, um, yeah, I think that the, the key point is um, that that talent is um, is equally distributed, uh, and so in that sense, yeah, at a philo philosophical level, there, there wouldn't be a difference. But I think um, there are going to be other differences. Uh, the, the Kenyan ecosystem is is more developed, but it, but then in, in Rwanda, we've got this whole proof of concept. We've we've got an empowering legislation, second to none. So so yeah. I think there. Are going to be differences, but I, I don't think those differences are necessarily going to uh, indicate, you know, wh where the biggest impact is going to come from. Um, and and uh, you know, I think you know, t talent can come and does come everywhere and anywhere, even you know, despite the level of sophistication of a particular ecosystem or not. Right. Wonderful. Thank you. Happiness. You want to add something on that, or no? Um, I haven't worked with so many Kenyans. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, guys, thank you very, very, very much for joining us. Um, before we, we end, do you have any other comments, any, any other thoughts, anything you'd like to share before we uh, um, close? We good? Um, no, well, just you know, I just think that there, there's a an extraordinary moment, and and in fact, just thinking more about that question about you know the the, the, the we shouldn't we shouldn't even be thinking about Rwanda or Kenya. We should be thinking about East Africa. We should be thinking about Africa because that's that's the the real opportunity that that we have here. This is this is our time, um, and and it really is a, a remarkable moment, and um, particularly in a place like Rwanda that is just so wide open to the opportunities that that the world has at the moment. Uh, I think it's a it's a very exciting time and, and would really encourage people to to investigate, to come kick the tires here. Uh, and as happiness says, you, you will most likely not find yourself leaving in, in a hurry. <laughs> yes, uh, I think uh, my last remark that um, welcome to Rwanda. Um, there's one detail I forgot to mention about our program that we also have um, international students within our program. Um, just a very small percentage of, of South Sudan, Burundi and DRC. So if you have any investments in um, in those countries and looking for talent, we would be happy to support you as well. Uh, but really, if you want to come and visit the country, get to know the people looking for talent, we're here to support you. So welcome. Wonderful. Wonderful. By the way, happiness, I was in Rwanda for the, my first time about four months mm -hmm. ago. It was incredible. Um, we mm -hmm. unfortunately didn't get a chance to meet in person, but it was really amazing. And I know I'll be back very soon. 
Um, I really do encourage everyone here who has, whoever hasn't been yet. It's an incredible country. Um, may I ask before we finish to just take a quick uh, print screen perhaps to share the picture? Is that okay with you guys? All right, yep. we'll just smile. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three. Okay, great. So um, again, thank you very much, both of you for joining us, sharing your thoughts and experience. And we're looking forward, by the way, at Empower Africa um, uh, to really uh, find many ways to hopefully uh, turning these ideas into actions and driving more business and investment into Rwanda. And like you're saying, Anthony, um, East Africa, West Africa, you know, Africa as a continent, uh, of course, uh, as a whole. Okay. So everybody stay, stay uh, safe and healthy. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.